Resonance. All pointers converge on a central theme. This is the simple truth of what we are, the essential and inescapable reality that shines behind the doubtless sense of being present and aware. No one can say, I am not, as the very statement presupposes the existence of the one attempting to deny his or her own existence. This is why one's existence is the touchstone or gold standard by which all other truths are evaluated. All pointers encourage us to probe the fundamental fact of our self-existent being, which not only is, but knows. This is the heart of the matter, the constant and final theme of all of the great traditions that have come down to us under the banner of non-duality. Non-duality speaks to the non-separation of the seeker and the final reality being sought. As all of the traditions tell us, each in its own way, you are that. In our own times, the direct communication of this basic truth was famously shared by the well-known sage of Mumbai, Nisargadatta Maharaj. I was fortunate enough to meet one of Nisargadatta Maharaj's direct students, Bob Adamson, in Melbourne, Australia, a few years ago. He shared with me the essential pointers he had received from Nisargadatta Maharaj. More importantly, he was able to point to the reality of my being so directly that it could no longer be avoided or overlooked. As he once mentioned to me, it is not the words themselves that are important, but the living reality behind the words that makes the difference. This reality, when recognized by one who knows, informs whatever words may be used as pointers. This causes a resonance in the inner being of the receptive listener, such that the true nature of the listener is recognized in all its immediacy and livingness. This is the pure light of non-conceptual awareness beyond thought. It is not that reality is difficult to perceive. In truth, it is so simple that we overlook the obvious. For how many thoughts, feelings, or experiences can you have without being present and aware to have them? Still, a direct pointer to this by one who knows is extremely helpful, as many can attest. The recognition of the inescapable and ever-present nature of the listener's real self lays bare the false basis of the belief that one is a separate, limited, isolated person apart from reality. As this is the basis of all of the concepts and identifications that generate limitation in life, this revelation effectively cancels needless psychological suffering. Such suffering is only sustained through a false belief in being something we are not. Not only is reality found to be shining within oneself as one's very self, but the seeking, suffering, and doubt that may have been carried for a lifetime is overcome at a stroke. In seeing and experiencing these basic truths for oneself, there may naturally arise a desire to share the good news with others who would resonate with the pointers themselves. There is no fixed set of pointers or manner of speaking of these fundamental truths. While the essential points being timeless, remain consistent from year to year and age to age, the manner in which they are framed and communicated must necessarily vary, based on the needs of the times. Furthermore, the questions and issues raised by those engaged in the verification of the truths in their own experience are bound to change. This is why it is useful to have fresh expressions and pointers set in contemporary words and speech. This allows us to focus on the essence and frees us from having to digest archaic terms and outdated cultural trappings.